Recently, I began to be more and more aware of and even more concerned. Uh, my concern has been growing for some time over certain things that I see that are happening in the nation. Now, of course, I'm not somebody who's got much of a voice as it pertains to these things, and I certainly don't come every Sunday to share with you my concerns about a variety of things, but I am concerned about this. You know, as I've been watching um, the news and all, and I'm going to assume that most, if not all of us, are people who do watch the news, I would say that much of the news that you watch, if you're not watching cable news, you're more than likely getting either CBS, ABC, NBC News, and the version of that, which is very often really not really, um, I don't think it's really uh, balanced at all. So I get my sources of news in different ways, and so one of the things I've been noting is that in, in, the, um, in the face of the situation with ISIS, and with the march, you know, that at one time they had been referred to as a JV team. Well, this team is no JV team. It's a very vicious, um, organized, and growing organization that is stretching its hands out in a variety of ways throughout the world now, you know, in Australia and in France and, and into England and uh, various places. Um, we need to be aware of that. And because of that, I've been waiting to see what our, our nation would do in response to it and especially wondering how our president would be addressing the uh, concerns that all of us are, are having. And so recently, some of you are aware of, all of us should be aware of this, that 20, uh, 21 Egyptian Coptic Christians were beheaded uh, and by, by um, ISIS terrorists. For some reason, our president can't bring himself to refer to them as terrorists. Uh, and, and is making an apology for uh, Islam throughout the world, basically, as he makes his, his uh, statements. And, um, you know, I, I've had a little bit of a problem with that. He became the historian-in-chief at the recent prayer breakfast where he wanted to remind Christians that of the, um, the crusades that happened uh, 1,100 years ago, went for 400 years, and did not account for the amount of deaths that that one uh, terrorist bombing of the, the tower in New York did. But... It's interesting how we were being chided as Christians that we're no better than anybody else and therefore should stay off of our high horses. But at the same time, you've got 21 Christian men who were marched to a seashore and brutally beheaded, and nothing's being said about this. And so I, I feel it's time that somebody says something, more people need to speak, and, and, all, and, and they need to understand that what's going on right now is interesting. How many of you have heard uh, not interesting in the interesting sort of way, interesting in the sense that I'm watching the responses. But how many of you have heard the statement where they have said, ISIS has said, uh, we're going to go to Rome? How many of you have heard that? I want to know who I'm speaking to right now. Okay, ISIS is saying, we're going to go to Rome. And so what is a result of, and let me, let me give you a, a bit of insight into that, what that means. Because I know what it means, but our press apparently doesn't, and Italy itself apparently didn't, or at least was acting in a way that one would wonder if they understood. You see, when they said, we're going to Rome, there's actually a, hist a history to that kind of comment. All you need to do is read your Bible and you begin to look and see certain things. You need to know that when the, when the Muslim says, we're going to Rome, it's not that we're going against Western civilization per se, but there's something deeper than that. You see, the church was birthed by the power of the Holy Spirit in the city of Jerusalem. And so you had actually five major centers of Christianity in the ancient world. You had Jerusalem, then you had Antioch. In the Bible, in the book of Acts, it states that Christians were first referred to as Christians in Antioch. And then you have Alexandria. Alexandria was a learning center in Egypt where a lot of Christians had gone, had tremendous influence, and some of the greatest thinkers in the Christian history came out of Alexandria. Then you have Constantinople, which was the center of Eastern Christianity. And then you have Rome. And what they're saying is, we have already destroyed Christianity in Jerusalem. We've destroyed it in Antioch. We have destroyed it in Constantinople. We have destroyed it in Alexandria, and we will destroy it in Rome. That's what they're saying. They're saying that we are coming against Christianity. They call Christians and they call Jews pigs, sons of apes. And so our, our, our president needs some advisors to let them know, and perhaps they're there telling him and he's not listening. I don't know. So when you start speaking about these who killed these Egyptians and will not even refer to the Egyptians as Christians, there's something wrong there. 
when you have people who are, when you have them say things about Islam and it's always with such a respectful way, and I'm not saying we should disrespect Islam. I am saying that it's interesting how Christianity is, is, is ignored and, and other religious faith is, is, is in front of everything. And, and as I've been watching this and thinking about this, you need, need to know that they were marched to the seashore. They were forced to put their heads on the ground. They were beheaded there so that their blood would, would go into the, the, the water. It was a statement that was being made. And, and people don't understand that because when they have you bow your head like that in the way that they were, uh, and I was reading one expert on, on how that really works out in Islam. They're saying that you are bowing your head to a false god, and we who are worshiping the true will remove your head from you. That's what they were doing. It wasn't just capital punishment. It was a statement about their faith. Now, I wonder how many of you know, I didn't know this until recently, that Coptic Christians have tattoos on their wrist. How many of you knew that? They have tattoos on their wrist of a cross. They have tattoos as a child, they get tattooed. American Christians, oh no, you know, they've got tattoos. They have a tattoo on their wrist. And that cross is to remind them, never compromise your faith. When these men were being beheaded, some of them were crying in, in their language, Yarabi Yasu is what they said. Jesus, he said, Lord Jesus, that's what that means. Lord Jesus. Some were reciting the Our Father as their heads were removed from them, as their faces were pressed on the ground. They said, you worship a false god, we'll remove your head. That's what was taking place. We're going to Rome is a threat against Christianity. We're going to destroy you who are followers of the cross. And so, that's what's going on. I'm concerned. And I wrote the president, whether he reads it or not, I don't know, but this is what I wrote him. And I, I wrote with respect, and I'd encourage you to write him, let him know if you have concern too. But this is what I wrote. I sent it today. I pastor a large Protestant church, and in speaking for my congregation as well as myself, I would respectfully encourage you, Mr. President, to react quickly and as forcefully as prudence allows to deal with the massacre of the Egyptian Christians. I would encourage you to not shy away from addressing these martyrs as Christians and would say that in your apparent diplomatic avoidance of doing so, you are giving the impression that their deaths do not matter. Please restrain yourself from acting as a lawyer. Take the mantle of commander in chief. As an army veteran who served with the US Army 82nd Airborne, my heart is touched by the needs of those who cannot help themselves. There is a time to use whatever force is necessary, and to be honest, that time is now. I encourage you to be decisive, to move the greatest military force on earth to action. I will support your efforts. We'll keep praying for you. Remember, Helen Keller once said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. I pray that you will have the vision necessary to lead this great nation. Thank you. And I wrote that for this church. It's time. We have to stand up against evil. We are salt and we are light. We speak for the voiceless and we defend the helpless. That's what we're called to do. No, I'm not running for political office, and no, I don't see a political solution to this, but I do believe that when evil is present, good has to stand up to oppose it, and I pray that we do as a nation. I hope that I speak for you when I wrote to him, but that's exactly what I think, and I think we need to do something. Now, I tell you this, if it was his daughter who recently we saw a young woman who died, she was held in ISIS captivity and she died. I guarantee you that if it was the president's daughter, one of his daughters, he would have moved to action for her. Well, that was our daughter in a sense and there was no action taken. We need to stand up against evil or it will overflow. We have to stand. And there's, I'm, I'm a man of peace, God knows it, but if somebody touched my wife to hurt her, I will give up my life for that woman, and I would give up my life for this nation. We need to stand up against evil. 
and I say that with all of my heart and all of my passion. Our Father, our Father, we lift up this to you. You have the world in your hand. You are directing. You are behind the activities we know, but we ask that you, Lord, would move to stop the evil. I pray for wisdom for our president. I pray that advisors would give to him wisdom that really is from you, Lord. We lift him to you. I would not want to wear the responsibility that he wears every day. I just pray for the man, and I ask, Lord, that you might move somehow to save your children. Lord, we don't expect a political kingdom. We know that it's a kingdom of righteousness, joy, and peace, and spirit. But I ask that you would cause us, Lord, to know what it means to oppose evil. We lift up our military. We lift up our law enforcement personnel, first responders. And I thank you, Lord, for their service and the way that they faithfully carry out their tasks. May your hand be upon them. Keep them safe, Lord, and do your work. And we would ask this as a congregation in the name of Jesus. Amen.